While Valérie Jodoin Keaton is a young photographer with an unusual interest in people, she spent the last three years working on a project to photograph the Grey Nuns at their downtown Montreal convent. Jeanette Kelly spoke to Valérie recently, and uh, she's here now with today's Arts Report. Hi. Hi, Bernie. So, uh, the Grey Nuns, uh, the ones who live in the mother house on uh, René Lévesque near Sema? Yes, I think if you're, if you're familiar with that section of René Lévesque, you come driving along, uh, and then all of a sudden there's this great stone building with a, a big park area in front of it and uh, that's where Valerie's photographs are on display that's these the sites which uh, which sparked her interest her I'll photos never, I'll never forget uh, the great nuns in my mind I always associate them with uh, my friend uh, Nick Oftermar who used to say that in one election it was the votes of the great nuns who got him <laughs> well, re re-elected they're, they're great nuns for living right that, that are in these photographs maybe uh, the the these are black and white photos uh, and the show is called in situ so it's a community's daily life, and I spoke to Valerie about what it was that first attracted her to uh, to these grey nuns. In 1998, I used to live um, downtown in these high-rise apartments, apartment buildings, and I was uh, contemplating this uh, ugly view of, the, you know, the, the scrapers, and I noticed this uh, very mysterious building, old building. And that mysterious building, she inquired, found out it belonged to the Grey Nuns, and then she approached them and said that she had a wonderfully warm welcome when she first asked if she could come in and visit. And she's been going back regularly for the past uh, three years to oh. prepare the exhibition. So I asked her, you know, what was it once she got inside? What, what was it like? This atmosphere of peace, of beauty inside. You feel that you're jumping into another world, into another time. The place itself is very old. It was built in 1871, and it's the inside is gorgeous. It's, abs it's a sanctuary, it really is. And just to spend a bit of time there is very relaxing. How, how much time did she spend there over the three-year period? Well, I don't know. She gave me the impression that she was in regularly because she wanted to catch the, to see the, the nuns in their daily life. So she has things, you know, pictures of a nun on an exercise bicycle. She has one sitting under a hairdryer reading a, a missionary magazine. Hmm. She has a lot of the architecture of the building, uh, uh, water on some of the pane glass windows, some that, that show that it's a very magnificent structure. Uh, and then the one that's on the cover of the of the the poster, or on the poster rather, which is this photograph of a nun who's kneeling and uh, meditating, I suppose. And, and Valerie's obviously down below her on her knees too. So you look up at this nun's face, and then you see the architecture of the chapel uh, in the background. So they're quite interesting, and they're quite um, uh, intimate. And I think she said that some of the nuns were probably too old to really understand what what uh, what she was doing. But she really did get a sense of of what their world was like. And I think she was a bit surprised by who these grey nuns were. They're really down to earth and they're very direct and honest. And the way they talk to you, the way they, they open, they opened up was just refreshing. And to get this uh, lucid, how should I say, a very um, clear uh, thinking and clear speech and honest speech was, mm -hmm. was great to hear. I think that um, at first I thought that they had uh, spent uh, most of their lives in an isolated place. But uh, in fact, a lot of them, and I would say most of them, have actually uh, been very, very busy traveling around the world and spending times in missions in, in isolated places like uh, the north, like the northern uh, uh, territories in Yukon and uh, Hudson Bay and even in Africa. So a lot of them are, have had uh, great adventures. Hmm. So that's that's where they go, obviously, to uh, when they retire, right? Yes, yes. So, uh, <laughs> but uh, so how did this uh, now? How did this affect her own uh, spiritual quest? Well, you know, I think she was surprised because uh, at least for the uh, the, uh, the the time that she was taking the photographs, I'm not sure that there was much questioning of her religious beliefs, or uh, certainly no attempt to to convert her to Catholicism. They never judged me, and that's amazing. I mean, I've been there for about three years. I've been going in and out. I've been meeting so many people. And none of them has ever asked me what my beliefs were. Um, none of them have ever even really talked about God, talked about their spiritual beliefs. And that I found amazing. And the fact is that I'm not a religious person. So that's Valérie Jordouin-Keaton uh, talking about the photographs of the Grey Nuns.
And uh, does she have uh, other uh, projects like she, this one? The one she did before was about blind people. She's hoping next to work on a project about women bullfighters. So she says there's something mm. about unusual occupations or lifestyles or people living differently. And I think that uh, she says she's not religious, and I, I, I'm sure that she isn't hasn't become religious because of this experience. But it looks as though during, through her photography, it is a way for her to reflect on the meaning mm. of life and, and, and looking at various people people's answers to, to that question is kind of a personal quest, I think, of hers, too. Mm. And uh, her works are on display until uh, June 30th at the uh, Marguerite Youville uh, Centre at 1185 St. Matthew uh, at the Guy Metro. That's right. 1185 St. Matthew at the Guy Metro. That's right. Great. Thank you very much. You're Jeanette. welcome. Bye-bye.